Coilover shocks are a great option for getting the perfect stance out of your car. Today let's talk about adjusting them to get that perfect ride height. Hey, I'm Trevor with QA1, here to talk to you today why coilovers are a great option for a performance gain and also being able to adjust our ride height. So they're unique in their design being that the spring seat is attached to the body of the shock. The body of the shock is threaded and this allows us to thread the spring seat up or down the body of the shock, which would thus increase or decrease our ride height as opposed to an OEM spring, which would be fixed in its location and ride height would be set based upon that fixed spring length. This now gives us the ability to change our ride height and dial in that perfect stance. So let's discuss the process today about uh, changing our ride height and how that procedure is done. So I've got this great looking Bel Air behind me here, but the back end is sitting a little higher than I'd prefer to see it. So let's highlight the adjustment procedure on how to lower the back end of this car. Very easy procedure that we can take care of in just a few minutes here. I'll show you how easy it is. So we want to start by getting the car set down on a level surface first. And we also want to know where our starting ride height is at. So we first want to take a measurement from the floor through the center line of the axle to the center of the fender. Once we've got that established, we can then set a new ride height goal and make our adjustments accordingly. Once we've got our goal set, we want to raise the, the car up in the air. I'll do that now and show you the adjustment procedure. So we want to lower the back of this car about one inch and on a solid axle suspension like this, we know that it's about a one to one ratio for uh, ride height change for spring seat change. So if you want to lower the back end one inch, we need to lower the spring seat an inch. On most front ends, it's about a two to one ratio. So if you wanna lower the front end an inch, then you'll need to change the spring seat height about a half inch. So let's talk about the ride height adjustment procedure here. We first wanna make sure that we've got anti-seize applied to the threads of the shock. This will eliminate potential for galling of the aluminum to the, to the spring seat adjusters. We want to lower our locking collar down out of the way. This will provide us clearance and access to our main spring seat adjuster. Once we've got our locking collar out of the way to leave room for our spanner wrench, we'll want to take one of our spanner wrench options and start making adjustments on the main locking collar. I like this ratchet style attachment here. I'm just going to hook onto the indent in the spanner nut and start lowering the spring seat down. So now that we've got our main spring seat adjusted down where we want it, we now can just thread our lock nut up against our spring seat and give this a little snug and they're locked together. Now it's time to set the car on the ground and check our new ride height. All right, now that we have the ride height adjusted where we want it, it's a good idea to set the car down and move the car back and forth, at least some, or even take it for a quick spin up and down the driveway. This will allow the suspension to settle out and give us a truer picture of where our final ride height would be. This is especially important on a front end or independent suspension. So now that we've seen how easy the ride height adjustment procedure is, we've got the car lowered back on the ground and it's a good time to recheck our ride height on both sides of the car. Make sure that we've hit the ride height we're looking for, which we have. If we haven't, we would want to go back in and adjust accordingly. At this point, it's also a good time as well to check our shock length at this new ride height to make sure we have an adequate amount of travel in the shock in both directions and also make sure that we're not going to be bottoming out on the frame to axle clearance or the tire to fender clearance. This would be a good time to double check all of those clearances at our new ride height point. If you have any questions on this procedure, please check out our tech page at qa1.net or reach out to our tech line. 
And now that you've seen how easy it is to get that perfect stance, it's time for you to feel that perfect ride and go drive it. I'm Trevor with QA1. You got your name down. I got my name down and QA1.